Okay, uh, this is a tutorial. I like to explain a little bit what happened uh, if you have a super complicated geometry, and sometimes you will get error message uh, when you use my definition is not able to compute the frames. And I also want to talk a little bit what's the reason uh, it failed and what are the solutions. Okay, um, to simplify that i just want to uh, show you this is from one of the student in a class uh, really interesting geometries super complicated i think this is made by a lot of boolean operation uh, add subtraction so if i run my grasshopper script uh, so first i will show you what happened if i just using the older version so for this latest version i will just simply disable it um yeah it's actually gonna automatically turn off because the number of computing is beyond the memory of Grasshopper. Uh, if that happens, you can just need to uh, retype Grasshopper uh, and be patient, wait a few seconds, you pop up. You see, this is the definition. It creates a lot of super dense frames right here. That's the reason it's getting slow. Um, one of the solution, if you do have this kind of very slow response in your computer, you probably want to either reduce um, the scale of your model. Uh, since we're using a particular value for contours, right? It create contour lines. If your model is really big, it generate a lot of contour lines. Uh, that's the reason it's getting pretty slow. So here, I will just simply disable the definition at the bottom. I will show you the original definition on the top and why this failed, okay? So as you can see, this one basically you wanna load a B-Wrap. Uh, so in this case, I already have this B-Wrap loaded. Now uh, you can see the color is green, right? But it's super complicated. Everything looks fine until this moment. Uh, so I create these contours, which basically subdivide uh, the geometry based on the two points, right? Two points you loaded uh, to show the orientation. And then let me just turn this to the shaded mode. So you should be able to see these two points somewhere. But anyway, uh, you got a point, you got the contour lines, right? But this is the place it actually failed. So you have this, uh, this called a fillet. Even the fillet is zero you actually generated a bunch of curves, right? Let me just switch, let me just hide this complicated shape. So you generate a bunch of curves, and then you want to use the offset. But here's a problem. If the geometry is getting super complicated, when you do the offset with certain value, you'll see the curve is actually being break apart, especially when you have this kind of concave uh, geometry. You have this kind of corner going to the negative values. This cannot really be easily solved. Uh, even you try, you know, maybe change this to negative three, right? So it's actually offside in the opposite direction, but still uh, it will generate some weird, uh, you know, offsides from this, uh, these curves. So let's wait a second. I think it's recomputing now. Oh, I can't really go to the negative. Let me just, Put this to negative 10, uh, just to show you my point. And um, I probably want to reduce the number of contours by increase the distance, because this one gonna be a little bit slow. But that's okay, let me just show you the point. If I do the negative three, right? So this is actually offset in the other direction but still you see this problem you got some arrows right so this will causing this solid difference will fail because there's no way you can compute right this group of lines from this offsetted value just because the corner is break apart you see the gap right here so this method will not work for the complicated shape this works perfectly for a simple one. Uh, so if you're not getting a, this kind of concave shape, if you just have a box, right, this will work very well. So if I you know, right click, set a B wrap to this box, and you can tell this box has no problem to compute 
this difference uh, since the offset is pretty clean. Okay. I probably want to give, uh, let me just hide this, since I'm doing the offset internally, uh, so you can see there's no problem to compute the frames, there's no, com no problem to compute uh, the final extrusion. All right, so probably I want to give this to a larger value. Let's see, maybe two. Oh, the maximum is one. Uh, by the way, if you want to really uh, uh, adjust the range of the slider, you can just double click the slider. Then you can uh, make it bigger. So now you can give a new value. So now you have a bigger frames. Okay. So we know that uh, the reason why it failed in the first place is just because offset doesn't really work for the concave complicated geometries. So what would be the solution, right? Um, you know, for this kind of geometry, this is also pretty complicated. If you, you know, loading this one in, let's just try, see if this one gonna work. You still have issues, right? Just because you know some of these offside, you have a very sharp corner. When you do the offside, it's all break apart, right? So there's no way you can do the difference from here. So the solution is I showed a little bit in my old tutorial is actually using the definition at the bottom, which was designed uh, to deal with this kind of super complicated geometries. So let me first just simply phrase the definition on the top. So disable, and then I will enable uh, the definition at the bottom. So here is enable, okay. It might start to compute since I already have something as an input. So let's just give like one minute until this computing is complete. And I will show you what the result looks like. Okay, so here is the result. Um, so first, Right. I have this geometry as an input. Then this one create contours, right? So there's no difference from the previous one. But instead of doing the offset, I'm adding these contours directly into this type of computing. So to create a pipe, uh, this is called Swift. Right? You basically, uh, you basically uh, extrude a profile along this path. Uh, so this path will basically dictate these individual frames uh, you can generate. So here you can control the size of the frames. So right now the radius is 4, but you can make it smaller if you think it's a little bit too fat. Right? And same thing, if I want to load in a different geometry, let's see, uh, I want to do so I have this super complicated one. So here, if I right click, set one B right, I can take this one in. Okay. So in your homework, you should put your own geometries. Uh, you can play with the definition in Grasshopper. Uh, feel free to change the thickness of the radius, uh, to change the distance of the contour. So it's actually shut down the grasshopper but you can just wait a uh, one minute and then reopen grasshopper i think it's still there it just takes some time to pop up okay so now i should have uh, this b wrap um, oops. i should have this b wrap loaded as your input uh, so here i have this contours. If you think this contour is too dense, uh, you can definitely go here. This is two points control the orientation. You can change the distance, right? You can increase this as 10 or you know, some other values. So feel free to do so. Um, and then at the end, it should generate this really dense, you know, uh, frame geometries right here. Yeah, this is pretty dense. I probably want to increase the distance. So this is four. Maybe I want to do double click. I can give this value as maybe 10. Click OK. 
So when you increase the distance, you get less frames, right? So it should take a little bit faster to compute the frames now. Right? It's definitely a good challenge for a computer uh, if it's able to handle this amount of computing. So you should have less contours and then you have these frames at the end, right here, okay. Uh, I do have another question from students ask me about these edges. Um, this is something I think I wanna talk quickly. If the geometry is a box or really simple volume, uh, there's no problem for Grasshopper to compute naked edges and internal edges, right? interior edges. But if you have a super complicated one, this computing probably will end up something as orange color. So that means it doesn't figure out any uh, curves as a naked. So there's none data inside this branch. But however, you do have something 208 curves in the interior. Uh, so there's still something being generated as the interior edges. Uh, so just keep in mind, this is something you might see uh, when you run this script just because of the complexity of this geometry. Uh, so here, if I bake the final result, you can see the contours as well as these edges. They are just not really as clean as the simple geometry. So here, if I bake it into maybe, let's just bake it into level three, and then I will close Grasshopper. Level three, turn on. Right, you see these geometries. If I switch to rendered, you can see the result. Right. So you have a lot of frames, plus you have um, the you have these edges as well. Okay. So I hope this tutorial will be helpful, uh, just to explain what happened when you see the error message in Grasshopper uh, and how to solve them. Uh, keep in mind the definition I have. You know, from 2017 is uh, relatively old. So if your geometry is too complicated, uh, don't use the definition on the top because offsite gonna fail. Uh, you're just using the definition at the bottom. Okay, they should work for both uh, B-Wrap as well as Mesh. Uh, but you do want to be very careful when you use Mesh. Is because this definition I did the contours. Also, I use this one. This is basically a tessellated mesh edges. Uh, this could generate thousands of edges and crash our computer. So be be careful if you're using this approach. Um, I will show you really quick since we're here. See if I have this uh, as a B wrap, but for some reason if I want to do a you know mesh approach. So I basically I will just type mesh. I convert this guy into a mesh with a minimum so you can see this portion is a mesh, right? So if I'm using this mesh and bring into that branch, so let's do that. So I will right click, load one mesh. Right? So this mesh is in, so you can see it's green, right? And this mesh is basically break into these naked edges as well as the internal edges, right? So you can see in this case, it's a 626 edges. Right? So it could be pretty, intimidating uh, if, you, if you are not careful. If you have like a super complicated uh, mesh with thousands of edges, this could be an issue. So here for the contours, how many contours I have? Uh, the contours, I have 52 contours, not too bad. So here add up together, you have 678 edges. Okay, maybe I will just simply flatten the hole and then I will using this right compute into the frame computing. Okay, so now at the end I have all of these edges. I will bake it. <clears throat> Maybe to level one. Just you can create a new layer for that. So now if I hide the original oops original mesh 
right? You can see that is a result from this baked version. So you have the contours and also you have these edges come from the original uh, mesh input, okay? Yeah, so play with these options uh, to see which uh, version works better for you. Uh, in some situation, probably you don't really need these naked edges or edges. In that case, you can just simply, you know, in this, you can disable the connection. Uh, so the way you can disable that is you can right click this input, then you can choose um, disconnect. I do that. Yeah, just disconnect. Right. So by doing so, you are not pipe the information forward. Uh, so it stop right here. Uh, that will make this uh, only compute the contours. So here, let me switch to the shaded view. You can see the only geometry, let's hide this, being pushed forward is the, is the contours, 52 contours. Right. Yeah. And then you can probably bake again. So let me turn off other layers. Right. So if you bake again, you only get the contours. There's no other naked edges or interior edges. So let's bake it. Let's create a new layer, layer six, and I will bake it. Okay. So now you have this new definition, and this definition only care about these contour edges. Okay. So it's really up to you uh, to play with this uh, definition. There's a lot of potentials. You can you know, play with densities, the thickness of the grasshopper uh, frames. Uh, you can even control the number of uh, edges. I would recommend using four. Uh, if you have too many edges, it's gonna be a crash on computer, right? So the R means re radius, S means uh, segments, the edges. So I can make this radius as a six. Right? I can reduce the edges to three, so it's a triangle as a profile. So if you do that, you can see this new version, right? This is a little bit different from the previous one. Let's just create a new layer so we can compare layer seven. Right? Then I will bake. okay close it so now you can see this is a fatter version right of this uh, compared with the skinnier version right. so that's the nature about parametric designs you have built the parameters and you can have a lot of different iteration quickly all right i hope this tutorial will be helpful uh, for you to deal with uh, this homework as well as you know just update a little bit since this was old you know, four years ago so you can watch this tutorial on top of the older one